This is Remix Report with your hosts, DJ JD and DJ J Spring. Today's video brought to you by YourDJDrops.com, the nation's hottest DJ drops. What's up, everyone? It's another weekend recap from Remix Report. I'm DJ JD. I'm DJ J Spring. Um, I guess you'll start off this week and tell sure. everybody what you did. Oh, uh, yeah. So my weekend, it was a pretty busy weekend. Uh... I had a graduation party for a high school kid in the area on Friday night before Shrine. It was it was supposed to happen a month ago when he actually graduated, but he broke his foot, so they pushed it back. So it was on Friday. So that was a uh, it's fun. It's interesting playing for a young crowd like that. Um, they actually had uh, pong tables set up. It was at this firehouse, and uh, they had pong tables set up for water pong since they were underage, can't do beer pong. They had three wow. tables set up. So all these kids are just sitting over there doing water pong for like an hour and a half. It seems like the worst game. It seems like when you play, if you're, any of your friends ever want to play poker, like for f no money, like it's just like, <laughs> I think that's the best way to explain it. But they're over there for like an hour and a half. I only played three hours. It was seven to 10. So from seven to eight thirty, they're over there playing that. And the father was coming up to me like, does it usually take this long for kids to start dancing? And I'm like, well... The kid that the party's for is over there playing Pong. There's no way anybody's going to really come out and dance when there's not even a whole lot of kids there to begin with. And Do you think he was saying that kind of talking down to you? Like, why aren't you making everybody dance? Yes and no. Like, he was really impressed with what I did and my setup and everything. So, But at the same time, I think he was thinking things would be a little different. So I told him that as soon as his son got out there and started dancing, everybody would definitely start dancing. So, not too long after that, the kid did tell everybody to start dancing, and it was cool. Um, so in Shrine that night, uh, it was a pretty good night at Shrine. Then Saturday, I did a picnic for a nurse's union at a local hospital from 11 to 6. Um, that's always interesting. Um, and then Saturday night, Open for Riz at Shrine. Riz killed it. It was a great night. Killed it as always. As Riz always. is definitely one of my favorite guys to watch, especially because he still plays um, a dope hip hop set, which yeah, is does. something I don't see from a lot of DJs nowadays. At he least just plays a DJs. dope, well rounded set. Yeah. All I and mean, everything he plays is just dope. He's good. Um, of course. My weekend, I did Scorpion Bar on Friday. Um, Saturday, I did a place I do once every month or two um, the Shadow Lounge or Shadow Room I'm sorry and, uh, it's in the middle of the state so I guess some people who don't get to see me we're kind of in the southeastern corner some people who don't get to see me down there can see me when I'm up at this place in Middletown and it was actually a tough night because there was a lot of uh, thugs in attendance and we know how it is this is a place that wants the same kind of music as Shrine open format um, more on the housey side so it was kind of tough because I would get text messages from the owner telling me play more girly stuff or play some house. Um, and I, basically, this was one of those gigs where you're not playing for the crowd. And those gigs can always be tough. I mean, JD and I both do that a lot of the time at Scorpion Bar because people don't always know it's a rock bar. Um, so we're playing rock when people want to hear Give Me Everything Tonight, which we can't play at Scorpion Bar. And this was a place where I was getting requests for crazy reggae songs that I know because I used to play a lot of reggae. And I've gotten to the point, I just give up. I don't, the worst thing you can do is I never tell people I used to spin all reggae. Like, I never try to be like, yeah, man, I can do it. Like, I'm cool. I know if you want hip hop, I can play Dipset Anthem and that kind of stuff. That's the worst thing you can say to, to people. So I just play dumb and I pretend I don't have any of that stuff. And no one's really dancing. It's just kind of... I don't know, it was just one of those nights. But. Yeah, it's always interesting when the owner or the promoter wants something different than the crowd they attract to that venue. And I mean, I understand from the owner and promoter's point of view of they're trying to attract a certain kind of crowd to their venue, and they're hoping that playing a certain kind of music attracts that crowd and rejects the kind of crowd they're not looking for. But oftentimes the, times the reality of the situation is they're letting the people in the door to begin with and they really have the first line of defense with the the bouncers and the door people letting people in the club that they actually don't want in the club, so I don't know. 
They, should, they shouldn't let people in the club they don't want in the club. And that's another thing you mentioned is sometimes is club versus promoter. Because I've had that happen before where a promoter wants one thing and the owner wants another. And that's always tough. Um, I recently did a place in Boston and I guess they wanted, the crowd wanted more hip-hop. And I played my usual up-tempo stuff. I mean, I still play my normal hip-hop sets. I try, to, I try to do a balance, kind of like what we talked about Riz. I try to kind of balance it the same way. And I almost got the feeling that promoter was a little frustrated because I didn't play as much hip hop. And this crowd, by any means, I mean, you hate to stereotype, but as a DJ, you have to stereotype. I looked at the crowd, and they weren't the typical crowd of what you would think would want all hip hop. So I played my normal set. And after, I felt like the promoter was almost disappointed that I didn't play more. But I had the owner, actually, or the manager, come up to me and ask for my number, saying they wanted to book me again. So it's kind of weird. I didn't even know how I felt after that night was over. It can be a tough juggle sometimes because you never really know, especially the first time you play at a venue, you, you don't necessarily know who's in charge of booking. You don't know who you really need to focus on impressing. And it's hard to impress everybody sometimes. So. Your, well, our, our disciple, Mr. Uh, John Cardona, was in the room when we were discussing this and we're trying to explain it to him. Um, as far as the art of playing for the crowd, there's not really a whole lot of uh, time that we actually get to do that. I mean, when you're doing your your graduation party that you mentioned, that's totally different. But as far as the club itself goes, I mean, how many clubs actually tell you and give you totally free reign to play whatever kind of music you know will make the crowd go crazy? I don't think any of them do. I mean, like, like I said, I, I think the... <laughs> The only thing I can think of is sometimes when you're playing somewhere and you see them actually going extra crazy for house, maybe you'll play some more house than you normally play. <laughs> but it's never that way with hip-hop. If you see them going crazy, crazy for hip-hop... Hip like, I should probably get up to house soon. <laughs> yeah, yeah that's, that's kind of funny how that works. It's true. It's true. I mean, the only time you can really do that is if you're like doing festivals and that kind of stuff where you're playing for just enormous audiences and yeah. that kind of venue, I think. Yeah. yeah, It's not too often you actually get to truly play for the crowd because I mean at least we're in the Northeast um, I don't know if it's different in other places but most of the crowds that we play for hip-hop goes over really well yeah. for the most part and it's kind of we're kind of limited to how much of that we can play um all right moving on uh, the new killer remixes from the disco fries and Clinton Sparks are gonna be released on the 30th that's uh, this Saturday so we're definitely looking forward to that we're gonna post the new kill, uh, killer trailer right below it's really dope so you got some footage that. with disco fries and clinton sparks yeah and we're gonna we did a behind the scenes video it's about 10 minutes long or so uh that i filmed with them a couple months ago and we're gonna post that uh this weekend as well so definitely stay tuned for that real quick really, i don't really know dope. uh if you guys understand how dope it is for disco fries that they're working with clinton sparks i don't know if you guys understand exactly how big a dj clinton sparks is he's someone that I was fortunate enough to be able to listen to on the radio and kind of watch him rise. Um, almost, I, I can actually say he really rose to fame. I mean, he was on, he does stuff for E, which used to be, I think, a correspondent for yeah. them. I don't know if he still does that or not, but I watched him start off. I mean, he's a guy who, if you ever read his bio, used to actually be homeless. And he worked his way up. And he used to DJ on the radio at a hip-hop station in Connecticut. And I, I actually could tell back then that he was uh, really smart with marketing. I think he, that's actually one of his phrases that he always plays over. is 50 Cent going, Clinton Sparks, he's a marketing genius. And he really is. He really is. And he's, he's probably one of the, the biggest open format DJs from the States. I can't really think of anyone in terms of following who's, who's bigger than, than He has like 100,000 Twitter followers. Yeah. That's crazy. I mean, he he really, especially being a hip hop DJ, yeah. which I mean, when you see him actually perform, he plays. Well, he's a open lot of format. He's open format now. I, yeah. I would say. Um, but it's it's, <coughs> it's interesting seeing someone who was so ingrained in like underground hip hop culture, kind of make that change and be successful at it as he is. So yeah. it's cool. Um, yeah. So look for those remixes coming up. Um, also, a big shout out to Aaron the Era for uh, doing a video for a remix that I did a while back with uh, DJ Nevik. Um, it's for Forever Chris Brown, so that's going to be below as well, so check that out. Nevik was a good friend of ours who actually passed away 
really young. This was probably about three four or five ago. years three ago. Three or four years ago. Yeah. So definitely That's want fine. to keep his memory alive. Yep. Um, the final thing is something that's been bugging me. The final a thought. Bit. Final thought. Mm. Like Jerry Springer. <laughs> Jay Springer. Yeah. Um, Jay Springer's final thought. This is something I, I think someone commented before about how our, our weekend recaps are turning into negative rants, which I don't think is totally true, but there is something that's been bugging me, I feel like Solar's right now. Um, people leaving Facebook spam, especially I just noticed this, this is what made it come up, is on Little John's DJ Soldier page, which anybody can correct me, if Little John actually came out, which I haven't been paying attention to this the whole time, if he actually came out and said, go ahead guys, this is a free for all, and post whatever links you want to advertise on my page, go ahead and do that. If for some reason he actually said that, then I apologize in advance. But assuming that he never said that, what are you guys thinking who, who go on his page and actually, I've seen posts where people advertise where they're going to be spinning on Saturday. People post links to their Twitter, follow me on Twitter, add me on Facebook, check out my new remix that doesn't even have Little John in it. I'd like to see you guys use more common sense. And one thing that's important to realize is just because other people are doing it doesn't mean you should too. And I know that's kind of tough um, for some of the younger guys who aren't sure exactly how to to go about marketing yourself you see everyone else doing it so you think it's okay to but like we mentioned before putting your stuff on someone else's Facebook page is like my friend Apathy said it's like going in to someone else's pizza store and putting a poster for your pizza shop on their wall that's exactly how I think of it um, so please yeah. and another thing people need to be careful I know we're, uh, we're running short on time be careful with uh, when you tag um, businesses in your Facebook posts. Especially, I've seen people say that I'm going to start my night off at this club and they'll tag it and then I'm going to end up at Club B. So I start off at Club A and end up at Club B and they tag both of them. And then, so this is going on both their walls. So now Club A's wall has a link to Club B on it. And Club B's wall has the post with Club A's link on it, which they probably don't want. I mean, it's nice that you're going there, and I'm sure they appreciate your business, obviously, but just be careful who you tag in your Facebook posts. And do understand that it's going on their wall. So that, that goes for, if I just came out with a remix that I did with JD, and I said on my Facebook, I said, check out this new remix featuring DJ JD, and I tag him. And then I make that same post, I keep promoting it, and I keep doing it every single day, I gotta understand that that's going on JD's wall every single day. So it might be cool if you guys are friends to tag him the first time, but you probably shouldn't keep tagging him every single day. You just gotta, you gotta think about that this is going on the other person or other businesses' wall. So just be careful what you guys do. Yeah, there should be a best practices for, uh, for tagging. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I really, we need to do something about DJ behavior, and especially in terms of marketing yourself, because... Sometimes people go overboard and you don't want to, you can end up looking really bad. I know you're, you're actually trying to make yourself look good and it actually comes across the opposite sometimes. It's backfiring. Yeah, yep. so. Agreed. So take notes on that. Think about it. Definitely think before you post. Yes. All right, so I think that's, that's our it. weekend. Hopefully your weekend was good too. We'll see you again very soon. Report.com.